In my last review, I asked people to suggest a new anime to watch, and a few commenters recommended another Netflix anime based on a manga named Ajin Demi Human. I'm a man of my word, and I checked it out. First of all, can I say I absolutely detest this animation style for anime. It looks so cheap. Like, am I crazy or does the style really accentuate a lower frame rate and make it much more noticeable? I felt the same way about Pacific Rim The Dark, but unlike Pacific Rim, Ajin didn't leave me so underwhelmed that I didn't immediately forget everything about it. Ajin opens with a bombastic start. A, a battlefield with what seems like a guerrilla force fighting one soldier. This lone figure is referred to as a soldier of God, and it seems to be taking out entire regiments of this guerrilla force all by itself. The central character is a child soldier who tries to desert, but is stopped. He's forced to fight the soldier, knowing it'll probably kill him. Luckily for our hero, though, he is able to get a few lucky shots in, and the soldier falls over dead. There's a momentary pause as if the hero doesn't know how to react to actually winning. But as the old adage says, Don't party just yet. Because the soldier of God gets back up and it looks like he's going to continue his rampage. But suddenly, a large organized military force sedates the soldier of God and extracts him. The child soldier is left in astonishment as it dawns on him that he and his friends were just pawns in an experiment to see how this being would fare in a combat environment. This prologue does so much without spoon feeding us the lore. It sets up the major mechanics that differentiate this world from ours, the concept of the Ajin. An Ajin is a being that cannot die. Their bodies will spontaneously regenerate and bring them back to life. They also seem to have access to some sort of spectral being known as Black Ghosts. This opening does such a good job, and it's actually annoying because just after the opening credits, we get this very unnecessary exposition dump where a teacher is just explaining Ajins to his students. This classroom scene is awkward, and it feels so forced. Why would school students be learning about this? Why would it be presented to them in this way? The major point is to set up the main characters to be interested in Ajins, but this could have been done way better. After the class gets out, the central character, K, goes home. He isn't paying attention, and he crosses the street and is hit by a truck. He immediately dies. But don't worry, he gets better. As he wakes up, he is horrified to learn that he is an Ajin himself. There only being a handful of Ajins worldwide, K becomes public enemy number one, as his government wants to capture him before anyone else can. K assumes that they want to capture him to make him into some sort of weapon, but that's just the tip of the cruel iceberg. What I like about this show is it shows how perverse the use of Aegeans would actually be. Yes, a soldier that can take a lot of punishment would be useful, but a person who cannot die and resurrects over and over again would have so much more profitable uses. Tests of unsafe products and environments, body mutilation, science in general would get a lot uglier. And this show does not run away from that premise. One thing I think this show gets really right though is its cast. Both the heroes and villains are both very interesting and likable. K is just a kid, but he's very open-minded and has a real sense of empathy even for those who want to hurt him. His ghost, however, seems to be different than the puppets that other Aegeans have, and that mystery box begs the question, what makes someone an Aegean anyway? And you really do want to watch more. The show has a variety of villains as well, all with different goals and uses for Aegeans. My favorite would be Mr. Sato, who is an Aegean himself, he has a very Magneto feel to him and his methods. But would I recommend Ajin though? Yes! Yes! There's a lot of really interesting stuff here and the psychological implications do fascinate me. But the animation style and the story structure is really clunky at times and it's off-putting and not in a good way. 
It's got a lot of heart, though, and if you're looking for some horror-based anime, I'd say give it a look. If you're not hooked after the first two episodes, it's probably not for you, though. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my Ajin Demi-Human review. Uh, if you like this, please give it a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I do have other reviews on this channel. I'll link a couple here. Uh, and if there's anything else you'd like me to check out, anime, video game, movie, whatever, just put it in the comments and maybe I'll check it out.